going to preach for us, and I, I, I can't say enough about uh, Brother Dave. He's a good man, a uh, good family, uh, and, and they're uh, going to be doing probably one of the hardest things they've ever done, and they don't know it. <laughs> and it's uh, starting a church, and it's not easy to start a church. It's not easy to go somewhere where there's nothing and try to do something for God. And uh, we're going to be praying for them, and we, we love them, and we're going to try to help them in any way that we can. And uh, I, I hope you, you give him your full attention, listen to him. And he's a good, good man. He's a godly man. He walks with God, and, uh, and he has a good family. And we're just excited. We're glad that he's here. He drove all the way from Arizona, and uh, we're going to have him preach tonight. So, uh, Brother Dave, come on up. Amen. 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 Bless you, brother. Thanks. That's your water right there. Thank you. Thanks for the gracious introduction, and uh, thanks everyone here. I, I, you know, I got a chance to meet quite, quite a large number of you, and um, and I'm really impressed with the church. You guys, you guys are are awesome. We have a great church here, Brother Menes. Um, I felt nothing but welcomed, and you have a great group of people here. A lot of people. I love God, and um, I just you know thank you for that. It's really an encouragement for me, you know, to be around other like-minded believers. It, it really stirs me up. You know, it's, it's great being able to go to other places and visit and just be around brothers and sisters in Christ and just, and just get that edification. And I met a lot of great people here today, so I, I, you know, I thank you all for that and for receiving me the way you have. And, um, you know, it really, truly is an honor to be here at Verity Baptist Church. I love the name of your church. Amen. And it's been, uh, it's been a problem for me because I have to come up for a name, a, a name for a church. And I love Verity because, you know, the word Verity means truth. Right, and and I think this is a church that if you're interested in the truth, you're in the right place. Now, sometimes the truth, it's not always pleasant. Sometimes it is. Sometimes you have good news, sometimes bad news. But the fact is, if you're interested in the truth, that's what matters. And we have God's word as the truth. Now, I'm going to tie it in with my sermon tonight. But let's um, let's open up in our Bibles to the Book of Proverbs. We're going to turn to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter number 4. I'm going to be read, reading verses number 1 through 13 of Proverbs chapter 4. You can follow along silently while I read. The Bible reads, Hear ye children the instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Forsake ye not my law. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also, and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words. Keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor, when thou dost embrace her. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace. A crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. If I have taught thee in the way of wisdom, I have led thee in right paths. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened, and when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction, let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you so much for this opportunity to preach tonight in front of all these people, and I pray that you would please bless every single person that's here tonight, dear God. I pray that you would please just fill me with your spirit, your power, dear God. To, to preach a message that, that you would have me to preach, and that um, I pray that the people here would receive receive the word in, in the spirit that it's given, dear Lord, um, and that that everybody here is just interested in the truth, and that um, I pray that you would please just give us all ears to hear and hearts to understand your word, and just teach us all tonight. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Now, Proverbs is a great book. It's a, it's a great book if you want to learn wisdom. And this is just an aside, because I just started doing this recently. I'm sure a lot of you probably heard this already, but a lot of people do what's called the proverb of the day, where you read whatever day of the month it is, 
because there's 30 or 31 days typically in a month, whatever day of the month it is, just to read that proverb. And that's something I added to my personal Bible reading. And because Proverbs is just a book of wisdom, I think it's a great thing that you could you could apply in your life. I mean, Proverbs is the one book that if you need like help with some different problems that you're having in your life, the book of Proverbs probably has the answer. I mean, it's one book that kind of encapsulates a lot of our day-to-day -day issues that we deal with. So reading that, I mean, if you read the, the book of Proverbs 12 times a year, that's great. I mean, you can get a lot, of, a lot of great wisdom, a lot of great understanding that way. And I would encourage you all to do that, not to, just re not to replace your regular Bible reading. I mean, we all ought to be in the Bible every day, but, but just kind of add this to it. So it's really going to be a blessing for you. Now, um, early, in many of the early chapters of the book of Proverbs, we see a common recurring theme. And what we see often is a father teaching his son, right? So over and over again, you'll see things like, Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings. My son, attend to my words. My son, forget not my law. Now, as a parent, I have two daughters and one, on the, one other child on the way. I don't know if it's a boy or a girl. I have a knowledge that they don't have, right? My oldest daughter is three. The, the youngest is um, going to be two soon. And... Um, you know, I have a knowledge that they don't have. So how important do you think it is for them to listen to what I have to say? It's really important, right? There's a lot of things that I know that if they would just listen, they don't have to go through a lot of hardship, a lot of troubles, a lot of pain, a lot of suffering. Right. If they right. can just receive the word that I'm trying to give them. And this is what we see here in the book of Proverbs. As a father, he's trying to explain to his son, say, look, listen to me. This is important. This is wisdom. This is something that you need to understand. This is going to help you through all the days of your life if you can listen to these words and just keep them in your heart and, and apply them. Now look at where we were in Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 1. It says, Hear ye children the instruction of a father and attend to no understanding. Now, don't think, okay, well, I'm not a child. This doesn't apply to me. You know, it's, that's, that's not true. You know, if, if you're saved today... You're a child of God, Amen. right? God is your father. Amen. And you're, you're born again. God is your father. You are a child. Yep. And we need to receive his word as a child. Mm. Now, it would be very important and wise for my children to listen to me because I have a certain level of knowledge, understanding, and wisdom that I've gained in my 36 years on this earth. How much more does God have in yeah, wisdom? Amen. His wisdom is infinite, right? right? We are all less knowledgeable than even my daughters are compared to me when we compare ourselves to God's wisdom. Mm -hmm. So we really ought to hang on all of his words. And all what he's trying to, to explain to us here is like, get wisdom. It says, wisdom is the principal thing in verse number seven. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all I get in, get understanding. It's, God is stressing this. Look, you need to have wisdom in your life. He says it's the principal thing. It's the first thing. That word principal is like first. The first thing you need to do, you need to get wisdom. And hopefully this sermon, what I want to teach is just to help, help you how to get wisdom. Amen. Okay, now in, in Proverbs chapter 1, you can turn over just a few pages. In uh, chapter 1, verse number 7, the Bible says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So we see here that the beginning is fearing the Lord. Okay, now what that means is you don't even have to always understand God's commandments and God's rules and what he has for us in the Bible, but you ought to just obey because you fear God, right? The same way that my children, they don't need to understand. If I tell them, say, for example, that because I like playing on these folding chairs, right? I know that that's dangerous. I know that those could slip up real fast and I could practically see it happening. But I could tell them, you know, I could sit them and say, explain, okay, and I don't want you to do which I do explain, but, you know, it's not going to go very far when I just explain, okay, I don't want you to do this, because if you do this, you're going to fall and get hurt. Kids don't listen to that. <laughs> right. But what they ought to do, if, I have, if they have the proper fear, if they fear a spanking, if they fear a punishment, yeah, then on. they just won't do it, whether or not they even understand that it's for their benefit. Sure. Now, my rules for them are for their benefit. It's not something that's, you know, against them or, oh, now I can't have any fun because I can't climb on this chair. Yeah. No, I'm looking out for them because I love them. And it's the same way with God's rules. Okay, God loves us. Now, we ought to start with that fear of God and say, you know what? 
If we're going to be disobedient and not listen to what he tells us to do, he's going to punish us. We're going to go through a lot more suffering in life if we, if we have the bad attitude and the wrong attitude towards God. Now, the first thing it says here, Proverbs 1.7 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Now, what we've noticed, uh, and what, what's interesting there, too, is the second part of the verse says, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And when we go back to Proverbs chapter 4, in verse 1, he says, Hear ye children the instruction of a father. Instruction. Now, the Bible gives us lots of instructions for our life. And I think about instructions... Think about like building a bike, right? Let's say, you know, again, I have a lot of analogies with my daughters because, you know, I'm the one, we get, they get new toys, new presents, I'm the one that has to put that stuff together, right? So let's say I get a new bike for my kids. Well, if I want to build that bike now, maybe I've built a lot of other stuff in the past. I might not need the instructions because I have that history, because I've gained some knowledge over time by doing things and trying things. And a lot of these toys are real similar anyways. But anytime I don't look at the instructions when I build stuff, there's always like one little thing that I'll have to go back and fix because I didn't do it right. But I did gain some kind of knowledge or some kind of wisdom through just my experience. But let's say it's the first time and I've never built anything like that before. If I don't follow the instructions, I'm probably going to make a lot of mistakes. It might not be that obvious if I don't have other experience, other knowledge to, to gain and to, um, to refer to. So those instruction booklets, I'm going to be looking at that and trying to follow it to a T. Now, hopefully it wasn't made in China and the instructions are just like practically non-existent. But thank God that his instruction book is very clear and, and we can follow this and um, don't have to worry about it, about it being unclear. But um, no, seriously, like if, if I were to follow the instructions that are well written, I could get that done without making any mistakes. Now, wisdom is similar, right? There's a lot of things in your life that I'm sure you already know are wrong, but probably from doing them already, right? But what we're trying to do is not continue to do that. We don't want to continue getting our knowledge and our wisdom that way. We want to be able to stop before that happens. So we ought to be able to take the Bible and read this and say, look, God is giving us instruction, and we ought to treat it as such. Instead of looking at it and saying, I don't really like what that says, and just deciding, well, it must not mean what it says here, so I'm just going to keep doing it anyways. That's a poor attitude to have, and I'll tell you what, if you're going against God's instructions, you're going you're to fail. Now, instruction is the first thing that's mentioned here in, in chapter 4 as far as getting wisdom and getting knowledge. Number 2, look at verse 2, it says, For I give you good doctrine. Mm. Now, a good church is going to teach you good doctrine. And don't get bored when doctrine gets teached, gets taught. <clears throat> Excuse me. Doctrine is very important. It's going it's to help you become more knowledgeable and more wise. That's right. Don't just sit back and, and let your eyes glaze over. Really try to pay attention, even if it is a struggle. Now, I know Brother Matt is a great pastor, a great teacher. He doesn't have too much of a problem. He's real dynamic, and he's able to keep people's focus and attention. But I'm not probably as good as he is, so try to bear with me and just listen. Cause <laughs> I'm trying to teach you a little bit of doctrine here, too. Uh, it might not be as easy to listen to, but it's really important just to try to try to, to, to pay attention because these are great truths from the Bible that we need to, we need to apply to our lives. Amen. And the second part of the verse says, Forsake ye not my law. And these next two points, the law and the commandments, are extremely important that we need to learn in order to have knowledge, in order to have wisdom. Verse number four, he says, He taught me also and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words. Keep thy commandments and live. He's associating just following commandments to living. I mean, that's pretty basic, but pretty important, right? I mean, you want to you keep living and living right. He says, keep my commandments. And a lot of people these days don't like to hear the commandments of God. They say, oh, well, we're in the New Testament. We're under grace. Mm, come on. What do the commandments have to do with us? Yeah. Well, God gave his commandments for a very big reason, a very important reason. You know what? It wasn't ever about salvation. Yeah, that's right. It wasn't about salvation before Jesus Christ. That's right. And it's not about salvation now, Amen. yet his commandments still hold weight. Amen. Amen. We still ought to learn his commandments and love his commandments and try to obey his commandments because it's life for us. We don't have to endure the chastening of the Lord if we just follow his simple commandments that he has laid out for us today. Now, in order to receive wisdom, 
And that was all by ways of introduction. In order to receive wisdom, what we must have is a humble heart. We need to have a heart that's ready to receive this instruction, that's ready to receive the commandments, and oftentimes a rebuke. The person that knows everything can't learn anything. That's good. I'll say that again. The person that knows everything, yeah, that's good. Come on. they can't learn anything. I was out soul winning, we were talking to a guy, and it's funny, you get this a lot. People say, oh yeah, you know, you ask them, oh, you know for sure that you're saved, you're on your way to heaven. And they give various answers, but a lot of times people say, oh yeah, 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 yeah. My, my dad was a, a preacher, or my brother is a preacher, something like that, and I know everything about the Bible. Mm -hmm. And it always blows me away to hear someone say, I know everything about the Bible. Just to have those words come out of your mouth. I mean, are you Jesus Christ in the flesh? You know everything about the Bible? I wouldn't come close to saying that. I mean, I feel like an idiot oftentimes when I read the Bible. I know nothing but, but to say, oh yeah, I know everything. I don't, need, I don't need to hear what you have to say. And unfortunately, you know what that is? That's pride. That is not a humble heart. That's someone saying, you know what, I know it all. You know what, I can't teach that person anything. That person's not going to get saved as long as they have that attitude. Right. And you know what, for us as Christians, thank, hopefully everybody here is saved already. But it's not just about salvation. We need to have humble hearts in order to receive instruction and receive the correction of God. And that we can learn. Never get to the point in your life where you think that you just know it all. You know what, I've heard it all. I, oh, yeah, I know the Bible or... Or maybe Pastor Hermes is preaching about something you've heard before. Maybe it's something like the King James Bible version issue. Or maybe it's some other doctrine that you say, you know what, I know this. Don't tune that out. Yeah, true. That's right. Don't tune that out because there's a lot of times there's things you can keep learning. I mean, the Bible's an infinite book. Just think, you can't just think, oh, well, I read the Bible once cover to cover. I did that. Done. I don't need to do that anymore. Every time I read, I'm sure that, that all of you can probably attest to this. Every time I read the Bible, I get something new out of it. Every time. I mean, it could be passages that I've known for years and I might have memorized. I might have memorized an entire chapter. And then I hear someone preach about that. And it's like, man, I never even thought about that. Amen. It's amazing. It's incredible how much you can learn. Amen. So don't get to that point where you think you've, you've learned everything. The Bible says in Proverbs 1.5, a wise man will hear and will increase learning. Amen. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. Turn to Proverbs chapter 9. There's a few pages over. I got, I got a few more verses here in Proverbs. Proverbs is a great book for learning wisdom. Proverbs chapter 9 and verse number 8. The Bible says, Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Excuse me. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. Now, rebuke, that's not a nice word. A rebu rebuke is saying, you know what, you're wrong. Mm. Now, most people's first reaction to that is going to be like defensive, right? No, no I'm not wrong. Right? But that's going to be the wrong reaction to have if you're wise. God says, rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. If you're wise, you're going to love someone that's going to point out your faults. And it starts, it's, it starts with having the right heart. Because the thing is, I want to please God. And who here, who here wants to please God? Who wants to be pleasing in God's Amen. sight? Amen. Right? I want to be pleasing in His sight. So if I'm doing something that God is not pleased with, I might not even know it. And if someone were to come and say, hey, you know what, brother? You really ought not to be doing this mm -hmm. because the Bible says this. I shouldn't, you know, the, the, the bad attitude to have would be getting mad at that person and, and getting angry and, you know, pushing him away or just saying, no, 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 I know what the Bible says. The right attitude would be, you know what? I'm going to love that person even more because they love me enough to point out an error and, and, and to show me, hey, you can grow in this area. Amen. And that's the proper, that, that takes a humble heart. That takes humility in order to receive that type of correction. Mm. But look at verse number nine. It says, give instruction to a wise man and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man and he will increase in learning. This is the way we, we, we increase our learning. It's the way we become wiser is having that humble attitude and that humble heart. And go ahead and turn to Proverbs chapter 22. There's a few more pages to the right. Because this is real important. This goes along with exactly what I'm trying to teach here, with having this, this humble attitude. Proverbs chapter 22, look at verse number 17. It says, Bow down thine ear, and hear the words of the wise, and apply thine heart 
unto my knowledge. You need to bow down your ear. Don't keep your head just lifted up and puffed up in the air. Bow down your ear. Bring yourself a little bit low. Apply your heart That's good, to understanding it? and to knowledge. Now, a good a church is going to teach these things. Have the right attitude. Don't bristle when the law and the commandments are, teach, are taught. I said, teach again. <laughs> like, it's like I don't know English. Excuse me. Don't get offended when there's a lot of heavy preaching on sin and the pastor just seems to be coming down and just, sit and just breathing fire against sin. Don't take it personally. You know what? And, and you know what? If you happen to be guilty of whatever it is that, that's being preached, don't bristle at that. The pastor's not doing it because he's pointing you out and says, you know what? I know you're doing this and I'm just going to lay into you. That's normally not the case. And I'll tell you right now because I'm going to get into some very specific things. I prepared this sermon without even knowing anybody here or who's going to be or anything like that. So let me just start off. And I don't normally do some disclaimers when I preach because I don't necessarily believe it should be necessary. But it goes with the spirit of what I'm trying to preach is that if something offends you tonight, don't get mad at the messenger. Yeah, that's right. If it's if if what I'm preaching is the word now, if I'm preaching lies, if I'm just preaching heresy or something, go ahead and get mad at me. Okay? If what I'm saying does not line up with what the Bible says, then you know what? I'll accept that. You go ahead and get mad at me. That's my fault. But if what I'm saying is found written in this book, and it's very clear, and you can see that, it's written there, then don't get mad at me. And you know what? If I'm going to say something, that it's not to make you mad. That's not the point. Right. The goal of teaching is to, is to help you. That's right. Amen. You know, the pastor that loves you the most is going to be the one that preaches the hardest against sin. Mm -hmm. Because he doesn't want you getting involved in that. He wants you to better yourself and, and live a better life and be more pleasing in God's sight. Amen. A lot of people just don't understand, you know, these fundamental Baptists. Why are they so hard on sin? Yeah. Why do they always got to yell against the TV shows and against the Hollywood? Yeah. Why does it got to be like that? Why can't you just relax? <laughs> it's, it's seriously, people don't understand it. It's because they don't understand what love really is. Right. It truly is loving to not want to see people screw up their lives. Amen. And even if you don't understand that, like... Like, well, oh, what big, what's the big deal? You can say, well, what's the big deal with, with, with watching all, all the, the smut on TV? Mm, come on. I don't get it. Well, you know what? The preacher gets it. A lot of other people get it, and, and God gets it. Yeah, amen. Right. <clears throat> the Bible says in Proverbs 6, 23, you don't have to turn. It says, for the commandment is a lamp, and the law is, is light. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Again, reproofs. Telling someone they're wrong. Proving to someone that they're wrong. Reproofs of instruction. They're the way of life. We ought to be happy when we get reproofs of instruction. We ought to be seeking out reproofs of instruction in God's word. And seeing how we can apply that change in our life. Now, who here is with me up to this point? Does this sound pretty good so far? Amen. 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 We're going to take a little test, so, so bear with me here, okay? Come on. Because so far, I haven't gotten very specific. And a lot of things that I said up to this point, I'll get a lot of agreement on. Because it's been pretty general. Sin is bad. We don't want to have sin in our life. Yeah. Okay? I'm not going to get much argument from very many people on that. Just all over the place, all over the board in Christianity. Most people say, yeah, yeah, you don't, you don't want to be full of sin. The problem comes in is when you start getting specific. Okay? Right. Now, what I'm trying to preach here is having the right heart, having the right attitude, having a humble attitude, having some humility in order to receive correction, in order to receive instruction, in order to receive wisdom and knowledge. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to do very little expounding on some of these verses. They're coming straight from the Bible. See if this makes you bristle in your heart. Now, hopefully, none of it does. I hope everybody is able to just say, you know what? Amen, that's good, I love God's law. That's the goal. Okay, well, let's see. The Bible says in Leviticus 20, 13, we'll start with this. If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination, right. they shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. Come on. God made a law that said homosexuality 
is punishable by the death penalty. That's what God said. I didn't make up the law. But what does the world teach you today? Hey, it's just fine. They do what they do. They love each other. We should let them do whatever they want to do. Don't, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. God loves them. Come on. Deuteronomy 22.5. And this is, these are a lot of common topics that will upset people. Okay? Deuteronomy 22.5 says, The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Right. No. This Amen. is so simple. I mean... Yeah. We, we live in such a twisted society that people actually get offended at this that, that says, God has a death penalty on homosexuality and he doesn't want cross-dressing. Yeah, come on. What kind of society are we in where people get offended at that? That's right. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> if, you're gonna, if you're offended at this point, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't know what I can do to help you at this point because I, I really hope that's not the case. And if, if you are, what's happened, I'll tell you exactly what's happened. You've been brainwashed. Amen. You've been brainwashed by the culture. You've been brainwashed by the TV. Yeah, and all these right. people trying to tell you, and, and Satan attacking God's word, trying to get you to think it's not that big of a deal. Well, you know what? These first two things God said are an abomination. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Abomination is not some light term that God just throws around. That's right. Come on. He uses it on very few specific sins. Two of them are the first ones I just mentioned. And these two things in today's society are just commonly and widely accepted. Yeah. How about the next thing? 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14. Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him. But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a cover. Men having long hair, women... Excuse me. No, God forbid. Scratch that. <laughs> men having short hair, women having long hair. There was a majority of a chapter is dedicated to that in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. That's right. God said it. Again, you don't have to get mad at a messenger. This is what the Bible says. How about this one? Here's, here's a great one. 1 Timothy chapter 2. Go ahead and turn there. 1 Timothy chapter 2. And I'm going to read Psalm 101.3. He says, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. When people start putting wicked things, when you start putting adulterers and adulteresses before your eyes, yeah, that's right. Come on. That's putting something wicked before your eyes. First yeah. Timothy chapter two, verse eleven. The Bible says, "The Bible says, let the woman learn in silence, with all subjection. Amen. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be." In silence. Mm. I'm not even going to say anything about that. That's what the Bible says. Amen. Proverbs chapter 23. You don't, you don't have to turn all these places if you don't want to. I'm just going to blow through some of these. The Bible says, Withhold not correction from the child. For if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. Mm. Thou shalt beat him with the rod and shalt deliver his soul from hell. Amen. Today, the world's going to tell you, no, that doesn't work. Put them in timeout. Mm. Come on. Don't spank your children. Put them in timeout. Is that what the Bible says? No. A lot of people get, get really angry and get really upset about these verses. Yeah. And the problem is because they don't have a heart that's willing to just accept the Bible for what it says, accept the truth of the Bible, and just say, hey, it's what it says. You can't argue with this. I mean, it's in black and white in front of your face. What does it say? Proverbs 23, 31, Look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth its color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright. The Bible says there's a beverage that we shouldn't even look at. That's right. Amen. A lot of people tell you, oh, I'm just a social drinker. It's fine. Mm. The Bible just says not to get drunk. No, the Bible says don't look at it. Amen. That's right. Don't even walk down that aisle in the grocery store. Don't look at it. Don't let your eyes behold that. Yeah. As soon as your eyes behold that, you're a lot more likely to start Putting it into your mouth. Just don't even look at it. It's that bad. It, yes, alcohol is that bad. That's right, amen. Don't even look at it. I'll, I'll, I'll finish up my list with this. Luke 16, 18. Whosoever putteth away his wife yeah. and marrieth another committeth 
adultery. And whosoever marrieth her that is put away from her husband committeth adultery. That's right. Now, you can't get much more clear than that. I'm sorry. Now, if any of you have done any of the sins that are in this list, I'm not trying, except for the first one. I'm not, Come on. I'm not, I'm not trying, I'm not trying to, to hold anything over you. Okay, but you ought to admit that maybe that, that it was wrong. You see what the Bible says? You know what? Maybe you did something in the past, maybe you've done something wrong. You know, God's very long suffering, God's very forgiving. Amen. But hey, don't get mad when you hear this. Right. Bible says we ought to confess and forsake our sins. Not to be bitter and, and hold on to them and say, no, I wasn't wrong. Have that humble attitude. Go ahead and turn to 1 Corinthians chapter number 8. I'm going to move on. I'm going to shift gears a little bit in my sermon. Because we need to have that, that, that humble attitude in order to receive this correction. And I hope you all pass the test. I hope none of those things rub you the wrong way. Because honestly, I mean, it's what the Bible says. I love God. I love His Word. Amen. Whether I'm do, you know, in sin and doing something wrong or not, whatever it is, I'm just going to love it for what it says because he knows what's best for us. He knows better than you do what's best for you. That's right. That's right. We just need to listen to him as children to a father. Listen to his words. Receive it. It's the way of life. Now, I'm shifting gears here. I see it. a lot of people, they'll attend really good churches, and they get all this stuff, and they love it. And they love hearing the commandments, and they, they, they just love receiving this stuff. And as newborn babies, they truly desire the sincere milk of the word. And that's great, and amen, and I love it. I've seen a lot of it. But one of the biggest pitfalls I've also seen that goes along with a, a quick increase in learning and knowledge is pride. People have a tendency to get puffed up when they increase their knowledge, especially when, it, when they do like a really big growth spur like early on. I mean, I've seen people come and join our church back at Fifth Ward that, you know, man, they get, they get saved and they get on fire and they want to serve God. And you know what? I love seeing that. Amen. Amen. I love, they get baptized, they get out, they start going soul winning. But then I start to see this attitude form. Because they're hearing things that, that might not even be coming. Unfortunately, it's almost a desolation out there in finding good churches to preach, preach hard on sin and just to preach the truth. But because we're in that that culture, a lot of times Christians will tend to get this puffed up attitude thinking that, oh man, they, you, you know, these people don't know anything and you know, I'm so smart because you know, I know all this stuff now. And I see people bad-mouthing pastors of churches and not just some heretics. Yeah. I've seen people bad-mouthing like, you know, Pretty good guys, pretty good pastors. They, they do soul winning. They do, you know, they're King James only. They love God. Now, maybe they're not preaching the way that, that maybe they ought to. Maybe they're, they're not doing some things exactly right. But you who's just been saved for six months, yeah. don't think that you just know so much more than the pastor that's been pastoring for 30 years. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, are you there? Look at verse number 1. The Bible says, Now as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. Do you think you're so smart? The Bible says, you know nothing yet as you ought to know. The Bible says, knowledge puffeth up, yes, but charity edifieth. How do you use that knowledge? That charity is the love that you show for other people. How do, you, how do you express that knowledge? Don't just get puffed up. If you're edifying other people through your charity, then you'll have the proper knowledge and using it properly. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, verse 7, Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Um, <clears throat> Proverbs 8, 13, the Bible says that we should hate pride and arrogance. And again, you're going to see, it, it's, it's great in the book of Proverbs, because Proverbs is the book of wisdom, you see it over and over and over and over again, fear the Lord, fear the Lord, fear the Lord. Proverbs 8.13 says, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Let me ask you this, do you hate evil? A lot of preaching on love, but do you, how is your hate life? Are you hating evil? 
right. Come on. The more you hate evil, the, the less you're going to be around, want to be around evil. That's right. You distance yourself, separate yourself from evil. Hate that evil. It says pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the froward mouth do I hate. These are all things we ought to hate. Don't get proud. Don't get arrogant. You might get a lot of knowledge, and that's great, and that's awesome, and, and, and that's, that's the goal. Wisdom is the principal thing, but don't let that wisdom, don't let that knowledge get you puffed up. Keep the humility that you have when you receive the instruction. Keep that all the way through to after you receive the instruction as well. We ought to always have a humble heart. Amen. Never get puffed up. Don't let this knowledge that you receive get puffed up. Another, another attribute I've seen of people that get puffed up, like I said earlier, they'll, they'll start to rebuke pastors and, and, and people have been saved for a really long time and actually know a lot of Bible. The Bible says, and you don't have to turn there, 1 Timothy 5, 1 says, rebuke not an elder, but treat him as a father and the younger men as brethren. Amen. Don't just go spouting off your mouth because you think you know so much. Now, you can treat them as a father, you know what that means? With a lot of respect. You ought to be treating your, your father with a lot of respect. If, if maybe someone's doing something wrong, you, it's not wrong to entreat them. Maybe they are in the wrong. But don't have a puffed up attitude about it. You might know, and you know what? You might know more than that person. Maybe you learn really fast. Entreat them as a father. The church of Corinth... Um, was experiencing a lot of problems uh, similar to this. Go ahead and turn to 1 Corinthians chapter number 3. We're going to spend some time in 1 Corinthians now. In 1 Corinthians 3, you see a lot of people were getting too caught up. It was, I mean, it was a young church, a lot of new believers. And they were getting caught up in being a follower of specific men. So I'm just saying, like, here, we'll read in, in, verse, in chapter number 3, verse number 4, the Bible says, for while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? Yeah. So Paul says over here, look, if you're saying, oh, I'm of Paul, or no, I'm of Apollos, he's saying, you're carnal. That'd be like me saying, oh, well, I'm of Pastor Anderson, because I go to his church, and you're saying, well, I'm of Pastor Jimenez. You know, it doesn't matter. That's right. And look what it says here in verse number five. It says, who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom ye believe? Even as the Lord gave to every man. The Bible says, look, the Lord's given to every man a minister to believe. That's right. That's right. He says, I have planted Apollos water, but God gave the increase. Right. Amen. Don't get caught up in a cult of personality. It doesn't matter That's right. who the individual, who the messenger is. It's the message, not the messenger. Amen. It's God's word. He's the one that gets the glory. He's the one that gives the increase. Amen. Look at chapter number four. 1 Corinthians chapter number 4 and verse 6. It says, In these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. Again, we see that pride. And it comes from them learning. And they're learning from great men of God. Apollos and Paul were great men of God. They were really great men of God. Amen. But they were using this and getting puffed up for one against another. That's not right. Verse number seven, for who maketh thee to differ from another? He's saying, why are you different from anyone else? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now, if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hadst not received? He's saying, look, everything you know, everything you got, you didn't come up with that on your own. You received that from somebody else. So why are you glorying? Why are you all puffed up? as if you didn't get it from somebody else. Right. My Bible knowledge, for the most part, has come from, from hearing preaching and come from hearing other things and from reading the Bible. God has given us his word. Amen. I didn't come up with this on my own. I'm not that smart. I know I'm not that smart. <laughs> not even close. We receive things. Again, it's a humble attitude. It's the same humility you have to have when you get saved. You need to be humble enough to just accept a free gift. You can't do it on your own. Well, in order to receive wisdom and knowledge, we have to be humble and receive that. And once we receive it, stay humble. Now, Paul addressed that issue in that 1 Corinthians. Go ahead and turn to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 10. 
But in 2 Corinthians, we see that that problem was not really corrected. That, that, that proud attitude that they were having was not fully corrected just from his first letter to them, just from the, the letter of 1 Corinthians. But I like how Paul was treating this with a very humble attitude because he was trying to instruct them. Now, they opposed themselves. But Paul was very humble and very meek when he was trying to instruct this church. Um, 2 Timothy 2.24, you don't have to turn there, says, And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. Basically, that God will, will work in their heart so that they could acknowledge the truth, which is what he was preaching to them. But he had meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. And we see here in 2 Corinthians chapter number 10, verse number 1, Now I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence and base among you, but being absent and bold toward you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. He was saying, look, I'm coming to you with the meekness and gentleness of, of Christ. He's saying, look, I'm base among you in presence. But see, they had a bad attitude. They started even getting a bad attitude about Paul. There were some people here when he was writing this that, that they were even to just think poorly about Paul. They were getting puffed up in their own knowledge, thinking that, oh, well, who are you, Paul? And that's why I said in the, in the end of verse 2 there, is that, which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. Like people were just thinking, oh, yeah, you're just walking in the flesh. Look at verse number 8. We're going to skip down. For though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, which the Lord hath given us for edification and not for your destruction, I should not be ashamed. He's saying, look, I should boast. He's saying, look, I could brag about this because I have authority. God has given him authority. But he doesn't boast. He's saying, I should boast somewhat more of our authority, which the Lord hath given us for edification. That was the authority that he had. It was for their edification and not for your destruction. He's saying, there, look, this is the authority I have. Skip down to verse number 12. He says, For we dare not make ourselves of the number, or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. What he's saying here is that, look, these people are comparing themselves between themselves, saying like, you know, comparing their own spirituality, saying like, oh, well, I'm better than brother so-and-so over here. And, and, just, and just having this attitude of, like, well, I'm better than you, and, and I'm better than him. And he's saying, they're not wise. And when, he, when, he, when I read this, it made me think of, a, of another story in Luke 18 of the, uh, the Pharisee and the publican, right? Yeah. In that story, you have, you have the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. And there he is comparing himself, right, to someone else, saying, you know what, I'm, God, and it's funny, too, because it never says, it says, the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. He wasn't even praying to God, he prayed with himself, saying, God, I thank thee, right? That he's not like all these other really bad people. That God, I thank you that I'm not like all of these, these horrible sinners. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. Just having this proud, arrogant attitude. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes in the heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Amen. That's the attitude we had to have because that's the man that went away justified and right. not the Pharisee. Amen. Don't let yourself get caught up. And you know what? It's great. You could clean up your life. Hopefully you do. Hopefully everybody here does. Get this sin out of your life. Live for God. Do what's right. But don't ever let that puff up your attitude and start to look down on people that might not be as clean as you are, that might not be at the same stage that you are in your yeah. Christianity and your spiritual walk with God. Right. Don't just look at them as some piece of trash or some piece of filth or some less of a person than you because you are so great and holy now. That is a poor, that is, that is the wrong attitude to have. Because you know what? You are just as wretched as that person. In the sight of God, all your righteousness, righteousnesses are like filthy rags. Right. Amen. In God's eyes, we're all sinners. Yeah. Okay? So don't look down upon other people just because 
you have started to grow and you have gotten gotten better in your walk with God. Are you still in 2 Corinthians chapter 10? Look down at verse number 17. It says, But he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Do you ever boast by there or glory about something? Glory in the Lord. He's the one that gave everything to you. For not he that commendeth himself is approved, but whom the Lord commendeth. It doesn't matter what people say. If people want to commend themselves, say, oh, I'm so great. That doesn't mean anything. It's who the Lord approves. Amen. Amen. I love how Paul rebukes their pride, too. Look at um, chapter number 11 of 2 Corinthians. I'm almost done here. I'm going to wrap things up. Look at verse number, or chapter number 11. In verse 17, I'm going to read through this. We're going to read through this section of Scripture here in 2 Corinthians chapter number 11 because Paul just rebukes their pride. I love, I love this chapter. I love what he does here. In 2 Corinthians chapter number 11, verse 17. <clears throat> that which I speak, I speak it not after the Lord, but as it were foolishly in this confidence of boasting. Seeing then that many glory after the flesh... I will glory also. So he's saying, I see how you're all glorying after the flesh. Okay, I'm going to glory also. Right? He's, he's, he's being a little like Isaac here. He's trying to show him something. He says, For ye suffer fools gladly, seeing ye yourselves are wise. For ye suffer, if a man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take of you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face. I speak as concerning reproach as though we had been weak. Howbeit, Wherein soever any is bold, I speak foolishly. I am bold also. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. And here he goes on. He's, he's explaining. He says, look, I'm speaking like a fool. Okay, he's not trying to compare himself among himself. He's trying to prove his point here. Because he's saying, you know what? You guys think that you're so great and you're, you're doing all this great work, and you're these pure Jews, and you're doing, you know, whatever it is. He said, I am more. In labors, more abundant. In stripes, above measure. In prisons, more frequent. In deaths, oft. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeyings, often in perils of waters, in perils of robbers. In perils by mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness, in painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Who is weak and I am not weak? Who is offended and I burn not? If I must needs glory... I will glory of the things which concerneth my, mine infirmities. So he's saying, look, all these things he's gone through, he has suffered tremendously. And I think it would be a very rare person that could compare themselves to the Apostle Paul. Right. When you look at the amount of, of peril and the trouble that he's gone through and the suffering and the pain for the love of God and for the glory of him and to get his gospel spread, and all the danger. It says in deaths oft. I mean, <laughs> deaths. Paul was stoned. He was like stoned to death and then and, and was miraculously healed, brought back. I mean, the guy has gone through a lot. He was whipped. He was beaten. He has gone through all these different things. And it's like, you're going to have people glorying and, and saying, oh yeah, who's that Paul guy? Mm. So I'm going to glory. I'm going to glory in, in the Lord and say, my suffering. This is the attitude that we ought to have as we grow in knowledge. Look at uh, chapter number 12. I'm almost done. Chapter number 12, verse number 6. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth. But now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations. He's saying, for, for all the great things that God has showed me. Lest I should be exalted above measure, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. The messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. So he's saying that even him, because he's, I mean, Paul is, is, was able to transmit God's word to us in many books of the New Testament. 
He was used greatly by God. But even God, you know, was showing, hey, look, there's a messenger of Satan that buffeted Paul just to make sure that he wasn't exalted too high. Because he was being used so much. And it's because it's not about Paul. That's right. It's not about him. It's not about the man. It's not about Pastor Amanda. It's not about me. It's not about any of the messengers. It's about God's word. Verse number 11, chapter 12 says, I am become a fool in glory. Ye have compelled me. So he's, he's going on, he's kind of summarizing all these, these chapters that he's been, been doing, all this, you know, rebuking them for their pride and everything. He says, I am become a fool in glory, and ye have compelled me, for I ought to have been commended of you. He's saying, look, I should have, you should have been commending me. Should, that's what you should have been doing. He says, for a nothing am I behind the very chiefest apostles, though I be nothing. And look at verse number 15. He says, And I will very gladly spend and be spent for you. Amen. Though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. And that is true as the day is long. God. There are so many pastors out there and so many men of God, so many preachers, not even just pastors, but that, that, that love people and they spend and they, be, they are spent. And, and, you know, a lot of people come to church. They don't realize the amount of work and the amount of effort that goes into this. You just show up and think, well, yeah, it's church. And then you go home and, and do whatever. And then the next time rolls around and, well, yeah, I'm here for church, of course. You don't always realize, and I didn't realize. I didn't realize this until I started getting much more involved in church and, 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 and really getting to know my pastor and getting to know a lot of what's going on behind the scenes. There's a lot of work that goes into the pastor's job. A lot of work, a lot of love, a lot of thinking and praying about other people, a lot of time invested in the Bible to be God's messenger and to do it truthfully and honestly and to, and to provide the things that you need from the Bible. It's a thankless job. And Paul said, the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. And that's just the way it is. Now, it ought not to be so, though, with you. You ought to show some appreciation for your pastor and, and, and the things that he does. And, and for God, don't bristle when, when you hear some of these commandments that, you know what, because of our society, they got us thinking that that's not the way it's supposed to be. And maybe you've been influenced by that a lot. I know I have. I've been heavily influenced by, by a lot of this world's teaching. But if you love the Bible and you love God's word, you can get that out. Get that mentality, get that thinking out. Have the humble heart. Have a humble heart to be able to, re to receive God's word, right. apply it to yourself, and once you start getting right with God and, and you start increasing your knowledge, maintain that humility. That's the way we're going to be a great blessing to help other people and to show them and, and to just basically help everyone else out and to have that humility to... Um, to continue on in the faith. Let's uh, bow our heads and have a word of prayer. Dear God, I thank you so much again for the opportunity to preach tonight. Lord, I, I truly hope that I was able to express um, some truths from the Bible, dear God, and that, that we'd all be able to learn and to be able to, to maintain a humble heart. Lord, I am not trying, I hope I didn't come off as, as proud or arrogant tonight. Dear God, because it, it, none of this is my knowledge or, or my my personal um, you know opinions. I, I, I thought I was trying to preach your word, dear God, and that I hope that everyone will will receive it as such, and will just at least be able to read the Bible and, and not uh, not shy away from it, not bristle from it, but just to learn and, and to grow in truth. And Lord, I pray for every individual here that you just help to strengthen this church, help this church Amen. to grow. Lord, um, you've done a, a, an amazing thing here. I, I, I could honestly say I love the people that are here. It's a great church. And I pray that you please just continue to build this church and help them to, to win more souls to Christ. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, brother. Thank you. Amen. Praise God. That was that was a great, great